and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're here today on this wonderful Sunday afternoon uh, celebrating some music and a little bit of art. And we have an unusual program for you. Hopefully we can present it properly for you, uh, something worthy of your interest and curiosity. And we're starting with a piece which, which is called the Arpeggioni, written by Schubert. <clears throat> and the Arpeggioni apparently was a very ancient instrument which was played like a cello. It had many strings and um, it did not evolve into the modern day symphony orchestra and solo repertoire. But in those days, um, it was played very beautifully in, let's say, for chamber music or in churches. The sound was adequate. The biggest problem was it, it didn't project. It was not a powerful virtuoso type instrument. So eventually, uh, like the dinosaur, it just kind of faded out. But Schubert wrote this piece uh, for the arpeggioni, or at least dedicated it to the arpeggioni. So it uh, has, has that kind of feel or sound to it, so to speak. So I'm normally a violinist, or, well, the word normal and me don't really go together too often, but I do play the violin much more than the viola. But in, in this case today, I will play and, and open our performance with the viola piece, which is called the arpeggi arpeggioni. We're going to play the first movement of it. And, of course, Schubert lived in the 18th century, uh, and he lived till 1828, apparently. And, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce our lovely pianist, direct from Russia. She just came directly for this Sunday afternoon's concert. She's going to fly back. I think we're flying back next, <laughs> next week, Wednesday, yes? Wednesday. Not really, no. Not really, no. Okay, it's mostly an imaginative thing. But, no, she is from Russia. You're from St. Petersburg, yes? I'm from Moscow. Oh, from Moscow. I don't know why I have it in my head that she must be from St. Petersburg. But anyway, there are people from Moscow, and she's one of them. Do you want to tell us about Moscow or, or not today? Not today. Not today. Okay, let's play some music. How about that, since we have instruments, and Mark Woodcock has been so kind to set up all this equipment here at the studio uh, near Central Park West. Why don't I shut up and we'll play some music for you? Okay.
Well, as I usually say, there's a little piece of it. That's a little bit of the Schubert. That was nicely done. Thank you very much for your collaboration and the opening of our performance here. Um, so, the arpeggioni was played on the viola, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a nice, nice melody, a lot, of, a lot of things. So now, we'll continue with our musical part of the program. And what would you like to play next? Beethoven. Beethoven, that's a good idea. We haven't had a little Beethoven around here. I'll switch back. I will now switch to the violin, which is a lot smaller than the uh, viola. Uh, and I'll switch to a violin bow. And uh, people ask me all the time, what's the difference between a viola and a violin? Well, the standard answer is that a viola will burn longer. And the viola will give you much more heat when you're really stuck in, a, say, a snow drift or a, a cabin full of snow. Uh, you need to have some sustained fire. Well, the, the viola will burn uh, longer. Anyway, that's a bad viola, viola joke, but that is a viola joke. Uh, they do have a series of viola jokes, but I won't go into those right now. Why they have them, I don't know. But anyway, uh, there's one another one I just thought of. Uh, how do you prevent your violin from being stolen from a parked car? Let's say you leave your instrument in the car, leave it leave your violin in a viola case. That way it won't get stolen. Anyway, that's another kind of a viola joke. Uh, well, we better get to the music before I say something I really shouldn't say. Okay. Uh, Beethoven, this is the, what, second sonata? Is it number two? Number two. Number two, and we're doing the last movement today uh, of this sonata. I believe it's the third movement. Allegro Piacevole. Hope you enjoyed it.
goes. Anyway, on the Upper West Side of New York, how are you doing over there? Okay? Yeah. Survived? Good. We'll discuss what happened later. Okay, now, let's see, what should I tell you? Hmm, I don't know. So many things. Well, we're, we're celebrating music and art today. It's always nice, and I do encourage uh, people, if they have children, or anybody, even older people, uh, children of their 70s or 80s or 90s, if they want to study some music or languages or art, it's really a good time to do that in the cold winter uh, and other difficulties we're having in the country this particular year, uh, to try new things. And art and music really have saved uh, me. It's very healing to a lot of people. Uh, in spite of a few wrong notes and a little bit of sloppiness here and there, the music really is quite, uh, quite heartwarming, and I hope you appreciate that. And, and we're very thankful to be able to get together and, and to pursue our communication through music. With that being said, we'll now play the second movement of the Vinyovsky Concerto No. 2. It's called Romance. Romance. Romance? Romance. Either way. Do you say romance or r romance? Romance. Romance. Okay. Very good. Let's give it a shot. By the way, it's very hard to transition from viola back to the tiny little violin, so it takes a lot of control and concentration, something which I'm lacking occasionally, or most of the time. Okay. Enough said. How about romance? Romance. Okay.
Hmm. I guess a little more rehearsal wouldn't hurt that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hope you enjoyed part of that. Uh, okay, let's see what we have next. Hmm. Well, let's see. Well, this should be kind of fun. Uh, some of this music slightly under-rehearsed, but it still gives it kind of a challenge. It's also new music for us, which makes it fun also. It's always good to learn new things. So why don't we try the Hungarian dance number one, okay? That would be, we don't have great expectations of this, but uh, I think there's, there's some nice moments in it I'd like to try to, try to capture, if possible. Fasten your seatbelts and maybe put, on, put in your earplugs for this one. But anyway, hope you enjoy it. Okay. Gypsy, it's a Hungarian dance number one and a half. We added a few extra notes, didn't we? Uh, by Johannes Brahms. So, with that in the books, so to speak, as they say, put it in the books. We'll play you a little background music while Mark might bring up a little bit of my artwork. By the way, this is my painting here in the back, which um, I'll just tell you uh, that it was done on a piece of cardboard some years ago. It's mostly the Upper West Side, looks like Riverside Park, a little bit of the Brooklyn Bridge, and this and that. 
But just so you know, people were asking, what is that artwork? So that is sort of an up, Upper West Side residential neighborhood, a compilation of some different, different things. And I also did the picture here of WC in the background. And well, Mark will show you some more of my artwork while we play a little more background music. So a piece by Fritz Kreiser, Liebesfreude. 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 Okay. All set. <laughs> Nicest three words I ever heard. <laughs> no, 